Once again to His Majesty. I'm your host Dawn Majesty. I'm here with my husband Dr. Roby and I'm here with our daughter, one of our daughters, Destiny. And by the way, Destiny is responsible for the intro and the outro music. Um, so yes. Anyway, let's crack on to this week. We are going to be discussing race and the misrepresentation of Christianity and the Bible. Um, as you well know, we have issues with the uh, the racial tension out there, hostility, um, racial divide. What does the Bible say? It's going to be talking about that and many other things. And I'm so excited for my husband being here and his valuable contribution and destiny, who is smart beyond her years. Okay. This week I'm so excited to bring you, it's a controversial topic, but I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. We're going to be discussing race. You know, we're living in very hostile and, and intolerable times. You know that the solution to all of this hatred is Jesus Christ, because God is love, and Jesus, as he stressed in the first two commandments of the New Testament, we love God and we love our neighbour as ourselves. Sadly, we're not seeing that today. So it's a conversation that needs to be had. You know, we, we usually have discussions about... Um, you know, race and issues in the household. So I just thought it would be a great opportunity, you know, as we discuss behind closed doors, we can discuss in front of the camera. And I was so, reading that the Black Lives Movement is growing in momentum and it's growing in not so much purpose because it's always had that purpose, but people, it's something like 26 million participants have been involved in Black Lives Matter. It's becoming very active and you know, maybe we're seeing some small changes here and there, you know, and we're grateful. You, you always say, Dr. Roby, that, you know, little change is better than none. Because my, my thing is, um, my thing is, we know that only God can change hearts. I, I, I believe that, you know, we can change a few laws here and there, but does that make someone love another person of another race? Uh, the fact that many black people uh, believe that, Christianity is not their religion. They believe it was, it was created and uh, maintained for the white person. But anyway, let's pick up on the fact that, you know, the momentum, Black Lives Matter is gaining momentum. We heard that, um, you know, many statues are coming down. The state of Mississippi, our origin or my husband's origin. Tell us about what's going on. I think the flag was, was denounced. Yes, um and just about a week or so ago, the flag was taken down from the um, state house. And the flag has flown for at least 113, 20 years. Wow. And, um, and it is good that the flag came down, but the flag came down because there were threats that certain athletes said they wouldn't play ball in the state. Mm -hmm. So it... It appeared to be a financial thing rather than a heart changing thing. Mm -hmm. And if we could ever get to the heart changing things, more things will happen. Amen. Glory because, I mean, racism is it's truly right. a sin. Yes. Truly a sin. And, yes. And, and, and God sees it and God is looking at us. He expects change. Yes. And this, one of the sad things, you know, from this racial, the riots and the constant bombardment of, of posts about black and white issues and you know evidence of racial hatred and mistreatment of, of, of certain uh, races 
is that even people that you would think that stood up for Christianity and Christ, they've taken a very peculiar stance. And we haven't, you know, black people may not be getting the support from even the churches, from their white Christian brethren, you know. And I think, as, as Dr. Roby, you said, that if hearts can change, and if we truly start to delve into um, the scriptures and allow the, the Holy Spirit, allow God to change us from the inside out, you know, it will be permanent. You know, um, Destiny, what do you think about this, um, the racial divide? And I mean, you said that your, some of your friends from your university were out on the front line and um, they were protesting. And we have seen more young people, you know, like us middle-aged people, we're like, watching everything yeah, on this telly. Is, this is, a, this is <laughs> you know? a, young, a young person's movement, basically. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I think it is absolutely amazing. I'm extremely proud of my, my young friends and you know people that I know because they are out there protesting. I think this generation, like my generation, we're sort of tired of seeing you know us dealing with the same issues that we yes. used to deal with in the past. And although you know there's a lot of people who aren't necessarily like um, people of colour, they are also taking part in these movements. Like, I know a lot yes. of white people who are at the front who are protesting, mm, who are mm. like, determined to make a change as well. Amen. And that's really good because although black people, we're doing the best that we can, this unfortunately, what white privilege is, what white privilege is that they sort of have, they have quite a lot of power in society. So. If we don't have white people also standing with us, then there's not really going to be substantial change because they hold the power to all these institutions that can actually bring forth the change. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Destiny, it's really encouraging that you say that young people are on the... Well, not that you say, we see it on, you know, we've, we've seen it all throughout these protests. We've seen the young people and people of different races fighting for equality. So, does that mean you have experience or you haven't experienced? you know, any racism yourself, if the young people are one with you, you know, of one accord and, equal, equal, you know, treating you as equal, or you can't really speak and generalise and say it's everyone. Have you experienced anything yourself personally? Well, as you said, although this is true, young people are out there fighting for equality. I myself have definitely experienced racism. But it's only really been in this country. I haven't experienced it in the United Kingdom. Right. But um, while I was here, I went to a predominantly white high school. And several times, I have experienced racism. In fact, one incident was when um, a white boy, I was in my band class, he, there was a black towel, and he said to me, personally, directly, he said, can you pass me the N-word towel, since the towel was black, and since oh I was a black goodness. person. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The N word towel, my goodness. Uh, and you also mentioned something about, you remember when she said about her hair, when she changed her hairstyle? Tell us about that. And how did you handle that? Or were you just stunned? I was actually stunned because this was at a young age for me. I was in middle school and I recently got on braids. And this girl, you know, Caucasian girl, she came up to me and said, Wow, Destiny, your hair. I didn't even seem like the type of person to do that. <laughs> And at the time, obviously, I didn't understand, you know, that that was sort of like an, ex an implicit form of racism, wow. an implicit form of discrimination. Yeah, and I experienced that myself. You know, we've been going. I changed my hair because I had passion twists. You know, the two previous times they see me, I had passion twists. So when I wore my little, you know, European hair, um, I um, they're like, "Wow, you look so nice." You look so different, wow! And they love me and they hugged me and I'm like, oh my goodness, wow. You didn't like my hair before, you judged me according to my hairstyle because I have some braids. Yeah, I've experienced yeah. that also. Oh People gosh. People give you so many compliments, like if you straighten your hair or, you know, get, get your hair yeah. done straight. Wow. But when your hair's like nice and natural in, in an afro, you don't really get compliments. Oh my goodness. Wow. And you know, you were saying something about when you went to uh, your family, the family gathering, and you wore like one of our native um, 
attires. Nigerian. <laughs> like Nigerian. You yeah, know, uh, and yeah, yeah. They were kind of looking at me strange, like, what is that? Or have you become all Muslim or something? <laughs> but 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 back to the back to the situation with the oh, school gosh. and the hair. You know, those are forms of racism. But Real racism, racism that hurts people is when within jobs, uh, you're discriminated on jobs, yes. uh, the criminal justice system. Oh, wow. Yes, you know, and the scriptures talk about the fact that we are all, I think it's first, I think it's uh, first Corinthians 12, 12, oh, right. that we, all, we are all part of one body. I mean, obviously, not everyone out there are believers in Christ Jesus and as I mentioned before some of the people we thought were true Christians true believers you know are quite apathetic they don't really care and they're not really standing with us apart from the fact that some of your you know young young friends are the young people are so we we really need to you know put the scriptures into practice as disciples if we say we we belong to Christ we need to we need to just lay race and colour aside. No so it's hopeful that we will see change where people are actually starting to challenge the normal practice of uh, abuse and misuse of power. You know, and yes, there, there. I think it's hopeful. You know, we have all these um, monuments. It was a poignant moment because um, the statue, when the statue of um, Christopher Columbus, you know, satisfactory. We had the Native Americans dancing around the, the statue of Christopher Columbus when that came down. They were celebrating. So, yes, uh, and just to add on to that, yeah, it really is about the changing part because we can change rules, we can eradicate this, and you know, we can write new policies, but we've been doing that for decades and there is still racism, there's still discrimination. And that is due to, due because people have hatred in their hearts. Mm. And that's something that we can't necessarily change your policies, but it's yes. only through Jesus Christ. Or well, the first, very first broadcast, I'm, I talked about the Good Samaritan, and I talked about the um, 10 lepers, the fact that even though the Samaritans were hated because of their race, they were not seen as the chosen people. They were seen as unclean. It was the Jews that were seen as clean. But God used them to exemplify. You know, in the book of 1 Samuel, I think it's chapter 16, it talks about God looks, you know, man looks at the outward appearance. You know, so people will look at the Samaritans and say they're dirty, they're unclean, they're, they're, they're filthy. But the Bible says that you will look at the outside. But... God looks at the heart. And those Samaritans, what does the name mean today? You have the Good Samaritan Charities. So they're, 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 they're written down in history for life. So we have to get away from the color of our skin and this race and that race. It's the, as Martin Luther King says, what, the context of the character as opposed to the color of the skin. So let's move on to the fact that there's been lots of misrepresentation um, in Christianity. I have friends that sometimes I share my faith with them and they, they get a bit upset with me because it's like, why are you still believing in this religion, this white man's religion? It is absolutely not a white man's religion. That's a false doctrine. Wow. In fact, um, Christianity has been around in Africa since the first century. Well, um, people in Europe, they were still practicing paganism and heathenism. Wow. In the north of Africa, they were practicing Christianity. And in fact, there's many scriptures in the Bible that will support that fact. Yes. Yes. And um, Acts chapter 8, with the Ethiopian yeah. eunuch mm -hmm. that Philip met, and it, it, it says that this Ethiopian eunuch lived in Ethiopia. He just came to Jerusalem to visit the temple, and he was going back. So it's not like, you know, he's from... The, Jerusalem, he was living in Africa yeah, with that. So, so and even to add on to that, in um, Acts 2 verse 10 and Acts 11, chapter 11 verse 20, also talks about Cyrene, you know, how they were um, just praising God. And Cyrene is modern day Libya. So Christianity has been around in Africa way before colonization. Wow. So it's actually a false doctrine that people are believing that Christianity is a white man's religion. White people claimed it as their religion, they sort of used it as a way to 
oppress, control, control, oppress African American slaves. But really, if people do their history, they need have to understand that Christianity does not derive from Caucasians. Okay. And this portrayal of Jesus being like, you know, mm. white, blue, um, blue eyes, blonde hair, that's absolutely false. Mm. And I, I would join in by saying that Christianity is an all man's religion, not black, not white. God yes. sent Jesus Christ here for everyone. everyone. Yes. But some, some groups have used Christianity to suppress, mm. to enslave, to do all these things to other people. And then that's where the, the misconception comes in. Well, if you use your religion to treat me like this, then I won't know part of your religion. Mm. But there's nothing wrong with Christianity. It's just sometimes it's perverted by certain people, mm. which gives the impression that something is wrong with it. Yes, Precisely. absolutely. I think it's in, is it Colossians or Galatians? that says no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is in all. And again, Galatians 3 verse 26 to 29 says, you know, well in verse 28 specifically, it says there is either neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. You know, and it's quite serious, isn't it? If people have misrepresented God, because we know that God is love. He loves everyone. I mean, going yeah. back to Gen Gen um, Genesis, really, God gave a man dominion over the animals. He didn't intend for man to dominate another man. He gave them, um, you know, superiority over the beasts, the, the birds of the air, the creatures, even... I think Have a look there you know yes we know that the slave and masters slaves obey your earthly masters we know that that's in the bible but the fact is is that because we are inherently evil without christ man has subjugate you know subjugated minority races for their own benefit and exploited them because even if you want to say that yes slavery is in the bible maybe so but didn't God say that? I was even looking at um, the scriptures here in Exodus. Talks about, you know, if you injure your slave, if you damage his eye or his, his tooth, you know, you set him free. It talks about if, you know, you kill, um, you know, if you kill a slave or somebody, you know, they're to be punished. The slave master is to be punished. And yet we have, we had lynchings and all that and KKK and all these things being celebrated and, and it was almost like, so if, the, if, 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 if certain groups or colonization brought Christianity, that means that it was perverted because true Christianity, the Bible says is to love all, you know? I would just like to add to that um, with what you said about it being perverted. In a way, Christianity, modern day Christianity, is quite perverted from how it originally was. When Christianity did eventually come to Europe, and you know, like um, when Romans started practicing Christianity, they also added their their paganism and their spiritualistic yes. religions to Christianity. They didn't get rid of their traditions. So in that way, Christianity sort of changed mm. from the Bible, you know, structured orig originality of Christianity. Yes. For example, you know, true, you know, the Sabbath, which is part of the original, the Mosaic Law, Ten Commandments. The Sabbath was originally on Saturday. Yeah, from Friday to Saturday. But their own traditional, traditional practices, practices with, with the Bible, and it was convenient to, you know, for Sunday, for example. So, and I think that's, people can be slightly um, suspicious or, you know, like my friends that will say, look, keep your Christianity to yourself because it's a white man's religion. So, and as you said, we see images of blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. And um, it's... Even in church as well. Yeah. Of white angels. And 
Yes, the established churches, you know. So, um, Dr. Robbie, what do you... What well, you... just to pick up on that. Yes. And, the, and there is nothing wrong with... I'm sure they're white angels. But I'm sure also they're black angels. Yes. <laughs> there may be yellow angels. Yes. God cares nothing about anyone's color or what color that is. God only concerned about love for yes. each other. Yes, absolutely. And uh, just to, to pick up on that and... Uh, Jesus was asked, what, what, is the, what is the greatest commandment? And uh, Jesus said to love, to love God yes. your, with all your heart, mind, and soul. Yes. And then he said the second is yes. to love your brother yes. as yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can't be a racist and love your brother as yourself. Yeah. And you can't be a true Christian and be a racist. It's impossible. Yeah. The two don't meet. Exactly. Because as we were saying earlier, if, if, if people have fixed in their mind that God looks nothing like them, then they have a tendency to say, well, you know, he, he, he's like them, and they kept me in, in chains for all these hundreds of years. Mm. So why would I want to be involved with a God who looks like them? Mm. But that's, that's not the case. Yes. So, you know, one, one of these days, see, yes. Jesus is coming back. Of course. And when Jesus steps yes. back on this earth, people may be shocked as to what he really looks like. He may, looks like, may look like this black man that has been hated for all these hundreds of years. We, we cannot get caught up in, in, in what with, color, in what color and, God yeah. is. Forget about color. Forget about what your parents taught you. Forget about what the, you know, the established church is. Know God for yourself, and you will see that. Because God, is, I always say that God is colorless. You know, he's a spirit. He's a spirit and he, we're made in his image. So you cannot say you love your brother and hate. You're hating yourself or you're hating God because we're all made in his image. God doesn't make no mistakes. He yeah. made some free, some slave, some Greek, some Jew, some Gentiles. But we're mm. all the same. Exactly. Same spirit. Because when this life is over, the flesh is going to be laid down. <laughs> you know, it's the spirit. So, you made some very important points there, Dr. Roby. Yeah, God says, he is no respecter of persons. Absolutely not. <laughs> Meaning that he doesn't care what you look like, yes. rich or poor, whatever. Yes. You are no better or no less than mm -hmm. anyone else on this earth. Absolutely. You know, and the more we focus on God's words because John chapter 12 verse 48 if I'm not mistaken those very words of Jesus the Bible is going to judge us on the last day not the, your association not even BLM not whether you're a Republican or Democrat okay none of those associations will get you a place for in in heaven it's whether you did the will of your father in heaven you know, what did Jesus say? When what did Jesus say when the crowd told him that his mother and brothers were looking for him? Jesus says, look, exactly. whoever does the will of my father in heaven, or something to that effect, is my brother, my mother, okay. my sister. So Destiny, you know, we talked about this, um, this advocate, there's a big movement, a big campaign to get rid of all these, because I know earlier you talked about, you know, the blonde hair and blue-eyed Jesus, that is a really is deception, is misrepresentation. I mean, we don't really know the, how the true image of Jesus is, but um, we, there's a big campaign, someone on social media, he has a massive following, so it's gaining momentum, gaining ground, this move to wipe out all of these statues, these depictions of Jesus Christ, you know, and replace them with a more realistic, but obviously we don't really, what's a realistic image of Jesus, we don't know. I mean, what would you say about about that? Well, for starters, I do agree with the movement to get rid of the statues of Jesus. However, there are a lot of other Christians who disagree with with that movement. They are actually quite furious that you know people are removing the depictions of Jesus. But I would just like to say that it's a form of idolatry, so mm. it shouldn't necessarily be. And you touched on yes, that last I did week, last actually, week. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. it's a form of idolatry. Yes, and yes. even though it represents, you know, our God, our Father, it's still not something that we need to hold so dearly that yes. we get angry and furious that they're removing yes. false rep misrepresentations of Jesus Christ. Mm. You should not be upset about that, in my opinion. Mm. And um, 
to talk about like uh, the actual depiction on Jesus. Yes, as my mother said, we don't necessarily know what Jesus really looked like because one of the early depictions of Jesus was based on the Pope of Rome, Caesar Borgia. Mm. It was uh, Leonardo Leonardo of Da Vinci, yes, the artist. In the likeness of Jesus. Wow, the yes, Pope. I remember, yes. And ever since then, many artists have replicated that yes. image that was not even based on the Lord Jesus Christ. So it wasn't based on the true likeness. So it's a fact that those depictions, the common depiction of Jesus is completely false. Wow. And it's based on the Pope instead of the actual Lord. That's, that's sad, isn't it? And it's the case of people just jumping on the bandwagon, you know, instead of d doing their research or they just follow and replicate and imitate a copy. And then now that's the problem we have right now where we have the same sort of image, you know, and not knowing that it's based on the Pope, yes. you know. And can I just add that there's also many depictions of Jesus that represent um, the, you know, the paganism, like um, the pagan paganistic gods. Why like the ancient gods? They yes. look a lot like Jesus. Like Nimrod, the sun god. Yes. yes. Zeus, you know, Zeus, Greek mythology. The Greek. Yeah. 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 As, as we had touched on earlier, yes. when Christianity had um, reached Rome, they wanted to keep their tradition. They wanted okay, to keep yes. their their paganism, their old religions. So they sort of mixed it up. Mm. Did you want to add something, Dr. Robert? Well, I would, I would just say, as I said earlier, that it shouldn't matter what Jesus looked like, but if you're going to use the image of Jesus to enslave another group of people, Mm. to make that group of people feel like Jesus has no association with them, mm. then that would be wrong. Yeah. But I would just say this to finish. Um, I saw a documentary whereby the churches, some of the old churches in Poland, depicted Jesus' mother, Mary, as a black lady. Mm. Interesting. And also... Yeah. We went to Romania a yes, few years back. Yes, we did. And on one of the old churches yes. there, they had a picture of Mary as a black lady. Yes. Even took a snap of it with my camera. Yes, I remember. So I now remember. if 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 Jesus if Mary is a black woman, how could Jesus not be a black child born as a black child? Well, that is debatable. That is debatable, but I'm just saying yes. it should matter because Jesus loves us all no matter Absolutely. If white, black, yellow, or Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. But the, the sin is people using an image to suppress another people. Yes. God will not be for that. Yes, that's definitely. So I, I, I would finish it at that. Yeah, that's, that's certainly um, something that can continue in discussion for weeks and months and years to come, isn't it? Yeah. And indeed, we will continue our heated discussion on racism and the misrepresentation of Christianity next week. Have a great week. I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Bye for now. To, to, pro, to, pro, to, to produce a better situation. <laughs> Stop it. Yes.